Let's ultrasound! On today's edition of General Ultrasound, we're diving into the scanning mistakes gallery. On today's episode, Aorta, mistake number six. Mistake number six when imaging the aorta is what I like to call image optimization fails. These are things not to do when optimizing your image. The first one to talk about is uneven TGC. In the first image to the left, the TGC in the near field at the tippity top of the image above the liver is too bright. When you stand back and look at your image, your eye will automatically be drawn to this bright area of the image rather than your area of interest, which is the aorta. Any bright areas in the image should be slightly toned down in brightness level so that your eye will be naturally drawn to the area of interest and not to the bright areas of your image. Also in this image, the TGC at the level of the aorta is too bright and the echoes are not cleared out of the aorta with the TGC. In the middle image, the TGC is darkened at the level of the aorta to clear the echoes out of the aorta, and this is exactly what you should do. However, the TGC is too dark in the far field below the aorta, and also the TGC in the liver itself is too dark. So at the level of the aorta, the TGC is correct. However, you want to brighten up the TGC at the level of the liver and also tone down the brightness of any fat between the liver and the aorta and brighten up the very bottom of your image below the aorta. In the image to the right, the TGC is correctly darkened at the level of the aorta to clear any echoes out of the aorta. However, the TGC is too bright above and below the aorta. Note that fat and bowel can easily be oversaturated with brightness. And whenever you have these in an ultrasound image, you wanna naturally tone down their brightness level with the TGC so that your eye is drawn to the area of interest rather than the echogenic fat or bowel. Also, with these bright TGC levels, the liver echo texture itself is also too bright in this image. Continuing along with mistake number six when imaging the aorta, these are image optimization fails. And in this next segment, we're going to be talking about depth. In the image to the far left, there's too much depth when imaging these transverse common iliac arteries. The common iliac artery should be located about three quarters of the way down the image. In this image, the common iliac arteries are too far away and also too small when they're located in this near field section of the image. Also, there's too much empty space below the aorta. It's important to note that every image is telling a story. In this image, the story that you're telling is that the fat and the bowel below the common iliac arteries are the star of your image rather than the common iliac arteries. In the middle image, there's also too much depth. The sagittal aorta is not located about three quarters of the way down the image. It's too far away and too small when it's located up in this near field section of the image. And there's too much empty space below the aorta. In the image to the far right, there's insufficient depth. The aorta is not located about three quarters of the way down the image. And this aorta is actually in danger of getting cut off in the bottom of the image. And there's too much empty space above the aorta. Remember that you want your image to tell a story. In this image, your story is saying that the fat and bowel above the aorta is the highlight of that image. Rather, the highlight of your image should be the aorta itself. So build your image around the aorta rather than the tissue around it. Next, let's talk about harnessing the power of the focus. That is your focal zones. And this is mistake number six. Image optimization fails when imaging the aorta. In the image to the far left, the focal zone is placed too high. This is going to cause the aorta to have artifactual echoes within it, and also the aorta walls will not be as well defined as they would be if the focus was brought lower. The focal zone should be placed 
at the level of the sagittal or transverse aorta. In the middle image, the focal zone is too low. The aorta will have artifactual echoes within it, and the walls are not going to be as well defined as they would be if the focal zone was moved higher. In the image to the far right, multiple foci are used, which is fine when imaging the aorta as long as frame rate is not a concern. However, the focal zones are optimized in this image to provide maximum detail to the SMA and above the SMA rather than the aorta. They are both too high. When using multiple focal zones, the lowest foci should be placed at the level of your area of interest, which in this image is your sagittal aorta. Continuing along with mistake number six, which our image optimization fails when imaging the aorta, now it's time to talk about frequency. And I like to say, don't forget me, because frequency, I believe, is one of the most underutilized controls on an ultrasound machine, simply because it's forgotten. In the first image, the frequency is too low. There's great penetration all the way down through the aorta, but low image resolution. And in this particular image, it's an easy to image patient. And so a higher frequency can be used to provide great resolution throughout that aorta. The image is grainy and the aorta wall is not well visualized. It's important that you always use the highest frequency that you can to image the aorta or any area of interest so that you're providing the highest detail resolution possible. However, it's okay to use a low frequency and get suboptimal image resolution if it's the only way to adequately penetrate all the way down through your aorta. In the middle image, the frequency is too high. There's insufficient penetration and you're going to have high resolution, but it's going to be impeded by reverberation artifact at the top of the image. So if you're imaging the aorta with a high frequency level and see reverberation artifact below the level of the tippity top of your image where you're going to see the muscles and fat of your anterior abdominal wall, if you see reverberation artifact below this, your frequency is too high and you need to decrease it to get more oomph to penetrate down through that aorta. The image to the right is what you're striving for. The frequency is set correctly. The image has high resolution throughout. There's also adequate penetration down through the aorta and the aorta wall is well visualized. Continuing along with mistake number six, image optimization fails when imaging the aorta. And now let's talk about how to properly utilize the field of view size and also the zoom controls, as these are often used in conjunction with one another. The field of view or width control should be kept wide when imaging large areas and or sagittal images or the sides of the area of interest are going to be cut off outside the image. And then you want to narrow the field of view or width size for small areas and or for cross-sectional images in the transverse plane. And you want to narrow that field of view so that the area of interest borders are not cut off. And also so that there's a rim of normal tissue around the area of interest, at least two finger widths on each side of the area of interest. And then you also want to position the area of interest so that it's located about three quarters of the way down the image. Two things that can go wrong when utilizing the field of view control is number one, you make it too small and you either cut off the sides of your area of interest or you don't show the tissue immediately surrounding your area of interest. Or number two, you forget that you have the field of view narrowed and then you go image a large structure such as the sagittal kidney and you are now cutting off the sides of your large structure. Now let's talk about the zoom control. The zoom control is often used in conjunction with the field of view control. It's important to note, however, that the zoom control also narrows your field of view. So if you're using both controls at the same time, you want to start with a slightly wider field of view size so that it doesn't end up too small after you use the zoom control. 
Remember that there's two types of zoom. There's read zoom, which just magnifies the existing pixels. And this is used when you're zooming a frozen image. And note that the resolution is going to quickly decrease when you're using this type of zoom. The area of interest is gonna become blurry if too much of this type of zoom is used. Right zoom is the other type of zoom. And this is when the existing pixels are rewrote when using the zoom control. And we use this by zooming a live image. And you're gonna get higher image resolution while zooming, but if you use too much, your area of interest can still become blurry. So the two main issues when using zoom control is number one, not realizing that it also narrows your field of view and ending up with a field of view size that's too narrow, or number two, using too much zoom in which your area of interest becomes blurry and it's no longer a diagnostic image. Now let's see some examples of the field of view control in use. In the image to the far left, the field of view is too narrow and the area of interest, which is the transverse common iliac arteries, are cut off on the sides. In this image, the zoom was used and the zoom control automatically narrowed the field of view size. If the field of view is narrowed before zoom is used, the zoom will further narrow the field of view, resulting in too narrow of a field of view. In the image to the far right hand side, the field of view is too narrow. The field of view size should be kept at its widest dimension when you're imaging the sagittal aorta or when you're imaging a large or elongated structure. Otherwise, your structures are going to lie outside the field of view size. In the middle image, the field of view is narrowed correctly. The field of view shows the entire area of interest, which is the transverse aorta, and also has at least two finger widths of space on each end of the area of interest. And this is crucial to be able to show some of the surrounding tissue. And also, the zoom is set correctly so that the image is not blurry, and the transverse aorta is located about three quarters of the way down the image. So what would happen if you don't show tissue around the area of interest? And the answer is you can miss things. Let's say you're showing an ovary and you narrow your field of view size and you don't show the tissue that's immediately surrounding the ovary. You could miss a mass that's hanging off the side of the ovary and or you could also miss free fluid in the region of the ovary, both of which are important diagnostic clues. That's why it's essential to not only show the entire area of interest, but also the tissue that's immediately surrounding that area of interest when you're utilizing the field of view and the zoom controls on an ultrasound. Continuing along with mistake number six, image optimization fails when imaging the aorta. Now let's talk about gain. In the image to the far left, the gain is set too brightly, and I like to call this a sunglasses image, meaning you need sunglasses to view it. The TGC is correctly decreased in the area of the aorta, but this makes the overall saturation brightness from the gain being too high even more prominent throughout the image. The aorta walls are also hard to visualize against the bright background. In the middle image, the gain is set too brightly. The fat and the tissue above and below the aorta are neon bright. Sunglasses image. Also, the aorta is going to display artifactual echoes within it due to the excessive gain level. Here's a little pro sonographer trick. You can get artifactual echoes out of the aorta, not only with the TGC, but also by decreasing the overall gain. In the image to the far right, the gain is set too darkly. The aorta has no artifactual echoes, which is correct, but the structures around the aorta, such as the liver and the tissue above and below the aorta are so dark that they're nearly indistinguishable. And it's really hard to visualize the aorta walls. The gain should be set so that the walls of the aorta are clearly visualized, also so that artifactual echoes are taken out of the aorta, but that surrounding structures such as the liver, maintain their normal echogenicity. Let's recap. Here's some tips on properly optimizing the aorta. Number one is gain. By using a slightly darker gain setting when imaging the aorta, this is also a great tool for helping to clear artifactual echoes out of the aorta. However, if the gain is too dark, 
then the walls of the aorta are going to be hard to visualize, and the liver will be too dark in echogenicity. If the overall gain is too bright, then fat that's above and below the aorta will appear neon bright and detract the attention away from the aorta itself. Now let's talk TGC. It's important to use TGC to clear artifactual echoes out of the aorta, but you want to watch for bright and dark bands in the image. This is a sign of uneven TGC. So sit back and take a look overall at your image. Is the tippity top of your image too bright? Is the liver, which is anterior to the proximal aorta, too dark? it should be medium gray in color. Pay close attention to the hyperechoic fat and tissue above and below the aorta. Since the aorta is anechoic, the hyperechoic tissue can look exaggerated in brightness compared to the aorta. Tone down any brightness of hyperechoic areas in the image to correct this. And then just sit back from your image. Which area of the image first catches your eye? If it's anything other than the aorta, then increase or decrease the brightness level of any areas in the image that are too dark or too bright. And this will ensure that your aorta becomes the star of your image and not something else in your image. Continuing along with our aorta image optimization recap, let's talk about the focal zones. You want to place a solitary focal zone at the level of the aorta in either sagittal or transverse. And this is also going to be a tool that will help you clear echoes out of the aorta and better visualize the aorta walls. For frequency, you want to use the highest frequency that is going to allow penetration down through the aorta. And watch for a reverberation artifact coming off the anterior abdominal wall structures that are at the tippity top of the image. This is your fat and muscle. This is a sign that your frequency is too high. If you need to use a low frequency, and this is necessary if you're going to need the penetration, you will have lower resolution and a grainier image. So something to keep in mind. Now let's talk depth. For the sagittal aorta, you want the aorta to be positioned about three quarters of the way down the image. And you want to pay special attention to the bottom wall of the proximal aorta if your vessel lies more vertically in orientation. You don't want to cut off the deeper, more proximal section of the aorta with your depth. For the transverse aorta, you want to position the aorta or the common iliac arteries about three quarters of the way down the image. Okay, let's dive into the next section of our aorta image optimization recap. And this is the field of view size and the zoom. Note that the zoom narrows the field of view size. So if you're using it in conjunction with the field of view size, begin with a larger field of view size. And you want to widen the field of view for the sagittal aorta and narrow it for the transverse aorta. And you want to ensure that your field of view does not cut off the sides of the area of interest and that there's a rim of tissue on each side of the area of interest of two finger widths. You don't want to zoom so much that the area of interest becomes blurry. And it's better when you can to use live zoom. This is your right zoom when possible over frozen zoom. This is your read zoom as you will end up with a less blurry image or a higher resolution when you're zooming. Next, it's really crucial that your aorta is on axis. Your sagittal aorta should be elongated across the screen. You don't want just a little piece of the aorta on the image or it's off axis. If there's gas obscuring a portion of the sagittal aorta, then elongate the aorta so that it's visible on each end of the gas. For grayscale, you want your aorta to be horizontal across the screen. And for color Doppler, you want to create an angle by heel toeing the transducer. And for your transverse aorta, you want it to be a round shape. Oblong is going to be off axis. Note, however, that the common iliac arteries in transverse most commonly are going to be slightly oblong in shape. 